and I'm screwing up my lighting already. It really sucks being a professional podcaster. You can't walk without screwing up your lighting. People are here. Oh, look, hi. Uh, we're waiting on um, people that who said they wanted to talk today. Let's find out if they were honest about that. Let's find out if they really wanted to talk. If anybody else wants to talk about this shit, this Ziploc bag full of papers I have, um, let me know and I'll shoot you the link. Um, you know, otherwise don't. Talk about it in the comments. It's been a weird week. It's been fun. All this stuff coming up. It's been, it's been good for me. I don't know how good it's been for you guys. But it's really put a lot into perspective for me which I'm enjoying. New documents, Houston Dave's like new new documents. Yeah. So what what we've released so far is a completely different litany of jewels that um, was used in late 1981. Uh, the date of the casts being made also this one this one comes later um yeah so joe allen had some notes that she released a while back and i got some more we're just kind of putting out just to buy like just to give something some of the people something to talk about because all of this stuff well 90 90 percent of it is going to come out at the meetup anyway i'm not going to release contracts like that, I think that would be a shitty thing to do. Like, because it's all about money, and and it's got a lot of personal information and stuff. Um, so I'm just not gonna do that. I feel like it's better to just not release them than to release them with a bunch of like sharpie marks. Like, I could make copies of this and then redact stuff, but I feel like that's kind of a shit way to do it. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. What do you guys think? Should I just redact stuff? I guess I should ask the people whose contracts it is too, because one person's like, "Don't release my contract," uh, so can't release that one. Um, the rest of this stuff, like this manuscript, was sort of poured over not not by me, mind you, uh, by someone else before me, and hints were removed. Like anything you could consider a hint, I guess, um, was removed. Um, so yeah there's a lot of cool stuff in it though like especially like when you get into the back of the book you know how like um people have always thought in the handy mandy core they use the name andy a lot and people are always like that's a hint to somebody else no what it is is um, in the beginning um in the beginning fuck, i don't want to mess with the focus in the beginning, um, Handy Mandy Core's name was Handy Andy. And uh, there's like a, where did I put it? Uh, there is part of the book where Byron like, like they typed out Handy, Handy Andy and Byron scratched it out and put Manticore and they left the Andy in the book, like the copy, like the editor or whatever didn't catch it, didn't catch the edit and left it as handy Andy. There's a lot of cool stuff like that, like stuff when I was reading the back of the book, like little things didn't make sense and like like stylistically or it didn't flow in sentences. And when you read this, you go, oh, there was an edit they didn't catch. Any previous versions of the versions versus? I, I don't know because like when, I mean, I assume there are previous versions of the verses out there, but there aren't in this. Um, because like I said, uh, it was it was stripped of 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 hints. So, um, but yeah, I assume there are previous verses out there, probably with the person who went 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 through all this for hints. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that, like names are changed. Those are fun. Like like fair folks' names are changed and descriptions are changed. But like you'll you'll be able to 
tear through all of this because we're, we're just going to put it out. Like, I, I don't feel like it's fair to, as soon as I saw some of this stuff, I was like, it's not fair of me to, number one, not put it out. Like, to say, I have this. Because, like, it, it, old podcast days, when we got stuff like this, we'd probably just, like, make an episode and talk about it and, like, try to tell you what all was there. And I, I didn't feel that was fair to people because like there's just so much stuff and there's no way that we could possibly go over it all and then there will always be that lingering thought like what are what are, what's being held back so uh i figured the most fair thing to do is just release it but then like people kept talking about it because we weren't going to release it until the meetup and people kept talking about it and i was like well let's just put out parts of it like later on everything will, will fit into context but we could like we could take these these big questions from the secret like when did when did byron bury the casks when did he start working on the puzzle we can take these big questions and we can just put out part of it and answer those right and and i'm i mean i i, I have no there's no like I'm not afraid of somebody finding something in the rest of the book that contradicts or what, you know, an idea that contradicts because it's in black and white. Um, so yeah, that, that was the, that was the goal. It was like, well, let's start having these conversations now. Um, and they've kind of, they've kind of helped me at least like put into perspective, uh, different hunters, right? Like, um, there aren't many, I guess Sunday's gonna come in. That's gonna be fun. She hearted the message with the links. I guess that's what that means. Um, there, there aren't many facts. It's so a separate tab at Twelve Treasures later. Yeah, kinda. We haven't figured out how. I, I, I keep saying we. It's just me. I haven't, I haven't figured out how to put. I mean, there's just gonna be a PDF at for like I, I'll put out on Facebook. I'll put out everywhere. Just a PDF of everything. Um, but then I do want to separate the pages on 12 treasures. And what I'm thinking about doing is going to the, in the American edition portion of 12 treasures, just finding the pages that these correspond to, which is going to be a little bit difficult because they're not laid out in the same way. Uh, just finding the corresponding page and adding, um, the manuscript page to it. I have audio of Sunday. Hey, oh, sorry. Turn no, on the camera. But no video. Oh, let me turn to Zoom. Oh, look, it's it's Sunday. Hi. Hey. I'm excited having... to be here. This is are exciting you? stuff. Is it? The litany? What are, you, what are you most excited? Oh, with the litany? Yes. Yeah. Although, that I have no crazy. idea what to think now. It kind of changed. It kind of changed stuff for me, I guess. That's, I mean, I think that's good. So, yeah. Like I was, uh, before you came on, I was talking about how, I was talking about basically, because I framed all of this as an experiment, right? Yeah. And nobody knew what I was experimenting with. Um, but now that I put out most of the stuff, I, I guess I can say it's pretty simple. There, there aren't many facts in the secret, right? right. There's a whole lot of opinions. Yeah. And I wanted to see what would happen to hunters if we just interjected facts? Like here is a fact, there is nothing, there's no, like, I'm not trying to explain it to you. I'm not right. trying to do anything. Like I'll ask you a question. Um, like I asked the question, um, how long did Byron spend working on the secret or whatever? Yeah. Get everybody's opinion and then just bam, here's a fact. Now, how does that affect the way you look at the puzzle? Does it not affect it at all? does it drastically change certain things for you? Or are you just kind of absorbing it into what you already thought? And that tells me what type of hunters I'm working with. Like from now on, if, if somebody messages me and is like, you know, Byron worked on this shit for years and he did all of it, I can automatically be like, eh, facts don't right. really matter to you. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? No, it does. We all have that, you know, we all have the, you know, I think, um, how we think it works, you know, like, and if even, I don't know, some ideas, like even I get some ideas sent to me sometimes, you know, and, yeah. um, and you do, you automatically look better on how I think it works. And um, some stuff, it just kind of falls outside of that envelope where you're like, 
kind of like what Cole was talking about where he was like some so you could have it fit 19 different ways but it's still not it's so far removed at that point you're like how the hell could you expect someone to get there um you know in a reproducible way you know kind of yeah. thing 